So 10th edition Warhammer might be coming this week. Ooh. Yes, Adepticon is coming, and the speculation is Warhammer 10th edition will be coming along with it. There have been plenty of teasers and reveals. We've already seen a Primaris version of Dante get accidentally released into the wild. Accidentally. But hype is at its highest. It's highest than I've seen it in a really, really long time. And people are excited for it. And I think I know why. I think it's fair to say that 9th edition Warhammer, i.e. the current edition of Warhammer, has turned into a little bit of a mess. Something similar to a fuster cluck. And as a result, the community generally does not seem to be having a ton of fun with Warhammer 9th edition. People are having issues with things like the stratagem system. There's just way, way too many. There have been a ton of releases for 9th edition, especially for certain armies which has led to a feeling of bloat. And overall, just the tempo and pace of releases and the type of releases that there have been, people are feeling overwhelmed and just a little bit over 9th edition Warhammer. So in a lot of ways, 10th edition Warhammer couldn't come soon enough. And that's great because 10th edition Warhammer offers an opportunity for Games Workshop to make a lot of amendments, a lot of changes to Warhammer and to fix a lot of problems that have become evident across the lifespan of 9th edition. So I am hopeful that there will be changes that are great for the game and ultimately result in a lot more fun matches. Yes! However, I am also concerned because 10th edition Warhammer is also an opportunity for things to go really, really wrong. Specifically around these three pillars. Number three, the content cycle. So there are rumors when it comes to Warhammer 10th edition. Currently, one of the major ones is that when it launches, we'll be going to Index Hammer. And yes, anyone who was around at the beginning of 8th edition or was around for 3rd edition Warhammer knows exactly what this means. When the new edition launches, we're going to have a big old book, maybe four of them, that gives the stats and statistics and special abilities of all the different units for all the different armies. No fluff, just crunch. And what that means is that everybody is going to be at the same level. Every single army will be made with the full knowledge of the stats and the abilities of every single other army. And for those who've played 8th edition Warhammer when it first came out, or 3rd edition Warhammer, it's a really fun time to play Warhammer. And this element of 10th edition really excites me. I'm actually really looking forward to being able to play Index Hammer again. It's pretty commonly agreed in the Warhammer community that the beginning of 8th edition was actually one of the most balanced, most fun moments, snapshots in the history of Warhammer 40k. And I'm really looking forward to experiencing that again. It turns out that if everybody is balanced against one another, it results in really fun, dynamic games. Couple that with the rumors that Warhammer 10th edition will be very different mechanically from any other version of Warhammer before it, and we could be in for some really interesting times. My only ask of Games Workshop here is that we stay there, that we stay in Index Hammer forever. Maintain the indices, please. It's actually a lot funner, almost everyone's agreed. One of my major concerns with 10th edition is that it's going to be really fun at first. But then, the cycle will begin again. First, there will be the Space Marine Codex within a month or two of launch. And then from there, every single army will once again get its own bespoke codex. Slowly dribbled out across a three-year period just in time for Warhammer 11th edition. This is the tried and true Warhammer 40k business model. This is the Games Workshop style, where they drip feed this content out in order to maintain liquidity, in order to maintain income, passive tribute from players in order to get access to the new rules for the armies. But here's the thing, there are lots of people out there who literally just purchased the Imperial Guard Codex a month or so ago. And then a couple of months later, 10th edition is going to come out and wipe that all away. And then what, two and a half more years until the next Codex comes out? That's a long time to wait for your own bespoke rules, especially when you're watching everybody else get theirs. Not to mention the fact that new armies are coming out a lot more these days. Most recently, of course, the Leagues of Votan. This just adds to the treadmill to a longer waiting time for existing armies for their new codices to come out. 
And that's before we even talk about balance. Because if we look at the last few editions of Warhammer 40k, then there is always an initial honeymoon period. It starts off, it's pretty sweet, especially at the beginning of 8th edition. We have this initial holy period where it seems like the game has really, really improved and things are a lot better now. Then the Space Marines get their first codex. It turns out they become really powerful. And then each army gets a new codex, one after the other. Each one more powerful than the last, each having a moment in the sun where it dominates the meta. And then finally, we get to the end stage, which is where we are now in 9th edition, where there are new supplement books, new box sets, and new rules for new units that are being added on top of older ones, and everything just becomes bloated and a bit of a mess. And we're left with an M balanced game state. And I understand why Games Workshop are doing this. This flavor of the month style of releases drives a lot of sales. But I also understand the motivations of the guy that mugged me for drug money recently. It doesn't make it any better, really. I would just ask that this time Games Workshop try something a little bit different, that they try to restrain themselves when it comes to the content cycle, and they let us play in the index times for at least a little bit longer. I want to have a lot more fun, balanced games, especially if the mechanics are changing. You can still update a game and add new content even if you have a centralized place where all the army rules are for free and the things are balanced around one another. Look at Grim Dark Future, for example, as a great example of this. Not only do they add new units to existing armies and new armies entirely to the game, but they're able to do so in a balanced way. Hell, they'll even work with other creators like Dragon Trapper's Lodge, allowing those creators to produce fully playable armies in One Page Rules and Grimdar Future. Like the Street Sharks. Remember those guys? Well, here they are in all their jawsome glory. And okay, technically, these are actually called the Sea Lord's Tide and have way more than just sharks, like giant turtle dudes, huge crab monstrosities, and terrifying shrimp dragons. But to me, my eyes are only on these shark guys. You know they're getting up to all sorts of adventures in Fishin' City. They're probably fighting the these plant guys, the Fey Petal Courts. There's definitely some deep background lore going on here. Who else but street sharks could take out a cabbage flower fox? Oh, and move over baby ooze. This little fairy hopper has officially taken over as the cutest thing ever made. That's not to say that the Fey Petal Courts are all cutesy. I'm not sure if you've ever seen a giant rose wielder like a staff before, but I have, and it's feckin' terrifying. And those are just a small sampling of all the Jossum models all being brought to you by Dragon Trapper's Lodge. That's right, this video is sponsored by Dragon Trapper's Lodge because this month they are bringing not one, but two entire unique armies that are completely compatible with the one page rules lineup of games, all for only $18, which is just insane. Get both the Sea Lord's Tide and the Fey Petal Courts, that's over 100 STL files, all of them fantastic, by clicking the link in the description of this video. And even better, because I know that there are a lot of people who see these STLs and get super sad because they won't be able to 3D print them. If you don't have a 3D printer at home, you can buy these as physical miniatures and have them shipped straight to your door so you won't miss out. Check out my link in the description below. And thanks to Dragon Trapper's Lodge for sponsoring this video. Unfortunately though, even if Games Workshop do go all in on indices like I would hope for, I'm still concerned that the fun of the game will be compromised by this next pillar. Two, live service gameplay. The last few years for Warhammer have been incredibly revolutionary, some in good ways, others in not. Mostly not. But we've seen the arrival of all new platforms like Warhammer Plus. This was pretty unprecedented. And while it has gotten a lot of deserved criticism for not properly crediting their creatives, or for hiding the talent that they have on the platform, or for just being kind of rubbish, or for just not really having anything on there, or hiding old rules, Rules. Come on, that was an easy win. This has also laid the foundation for Games Workshop to begin charging monthly fees to Warhammer players and to get Warhammer enjoyers used to the idea of paying monthly recurring fees to Games Workshop. Not to mention, Games Workshop have also pushed the seasonal business model. We don't just get new releases these days, we experience seasons. 
the most recent of which is the Ark of Omen series. This is a series of four different books that is kind of tied into these different releases as well. You've got your Borden patrols, which are bundled boxes, as well as a whole new terrain set. And of course, a new game mode of Warhammer 40k. And all of this is designed to represent a new narrative in Warhammer 40k and for players to engage with that narrative through these purchases and new game modes. Yes, there is only four books, but how long will they be relevant for? My concern is that 10th edition Warhammer will double down on this business model and that this will be to the detriment of the overall experience of Warhammer 40k players. And there will be so much content released that is then rendered redundant by future content that in a year or two, we'll just be looking at a wasteland of books and releases, much of which isn't relevant to veteran players and even worse, actively confusing for newer players to navigate. We can already see this in Ark of Omens. We're on book three right now and I see new players asking whether or not these books are relevant for them, whether or not they should buy them. And that's right now, while we're in the middle of this season. Think about a year's time. Will the Ark of Omens be relevant to anybody at that stage? It's a new game mode. Maybe people will want to play it, but I warrant that most actually won't. That if this season model is truly indulged in in Warhammer 10th edition, there'll be something entirely new to buy into. And this is a little bit unprecedented for Warhammer. Even back in the olden days, when they used to release books like the City Fight books, they were designed to be experiences that lasted a while. They were designed for specific campaigns. But the Ark of Omens is almost the default way of playing right now, according to Games Workshop, because it's the thing being actively monetized. What do you think happens when it's no longer being actively monetized? The support for it will probably go away and there will be something new to indulge in. To see that in action, you just need to look at Warcry or Kill Team. These are the two skirmish games from Games Workshop that are also experiencing the season model, and already it has resulted in a worse experience for players. There are new box sets coming out every couple of months. They don't have the rules. In fact, I don't know if there's any way to actually get the rules for either of these games now. I think Warcry are available for free, but I'm not sure about Kill Team. But this entire model has resulted in games that are harder to get into for newer players and hard to keep up with, whoever you are. And now that Games Workshop have Warhammer Plus and the biggest infrastructure to actually monetize players via subscription fee, I'm concerned that rather than simply just releasing all of the Warhammer 40k rules either for free or just in these one and done index books, we're instead going to see that same drip feed of content, but via digital means and perhaps for a subscription fee or for just a recurring fee, generally speaking. And while there are good sides to that, I think there are a ton of bad ones as well. Most notably being that it will end up costing consumers a lot more overall over time, coupled with another couple of seasons of Ark of Omen style content releases, and I'm a little bit concerned about what the future of Warhammer looks like, especially around the business model that Games Workshop are preparing for it. Number one, innovation. So as I've already alluded to in the video, there are a ton of rumors right now that the actual gameplay of Warhammer 40k will be changing, that it'll be getting innovated in. The main one I've heard is that to wound rules are going away, and honestly, this sounds really exciting to me. I'm incredibly excited by the idea that Warhammer's core gameplay will get shaken up. It's been in a little bit of a rut, and Games Workshop are notoriously conservative when it comes to changing the game. There have been changes in the past, but generally speaking, it tends to keep the same through lines. And this isn't because Warhammer is particularly well designed and they're worried about messing up a beautiful formula, it's mostly because Games Workshop are worried about alienating consumers. Infamously, Rick Priestley, the designer of Warhammer 40k, left Games Workshop in 2008 because they would not allow him to make changes to the core formula of the game. He specifically cited the fact that they wouldn't let him innovate for his reasons as to leaving. And then he went on to create things like Bolt Action, which is one of the greatest miniature war games ever made. Classic successful management from Games Workshop as usual. And while I understand there's a lot of people who really enjoy Warhammer, I get that, and that there is a concern that the game will be changed in a way where it's no longer fun. To be frank, in the last 10 years, miniature war gaming has gotten better than ever. It has progressed massively. 
The market has never been more innovative. I am someone that plays a wide variety of war games. And in fact, if you want to hear about my reviews of lots of war games, check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash discourse miniatures for bonus videos. And in all honesty, games have never been this fun, this mechanically satisfying. Gameplay has never been this good before. I've been in this hobby for 20 years and many war gaming right now is better than ever. There are so many amazing games out there with so many awesome mechanics. Warhammer 40k dominates the market. Most people play Warhammer 40k. The game mechanics are almost irrelevant to the actual success of the game. And the conservatism of Games Workshop when it comes to Warhammer's game mechanics has not helped it. Warhammer has lagged behind the rest of the market, not only when it comes to innovation, but when it comes to fun and good game design. After playing so many awesome, innovative, fresh, fast games, going back to Warhammer is a bit of a struggle. I think it's fair to say that most other games have improved upon Warhammer's activation system, its initiative system, the dice rolls, army building, and balance. Seriously, if you've never played a game outside of Warhammer 40k, you really owe it to yourself to try one of them. Because you might just be surprised at how mechanically deep, rich, and rewarding they are to play. Right now, 9th edition Warhammer feels a bit like an ossified relic, complete with gotcha elements and a clunky activation system where players labor to activate, move, and shoot all of their units all at once. And this is game design from the 80s, and it shows. I hope that Games Workshop's design studio have been paying attention to the wider market and are ready to implement some of the new innovative things that we have seen in the last couple of years. It's obvious to me that there is a great hunger for a more playable version of Warhammer that's a little bit more fast, a little bit funner, a little bit sleeker. Look at the number of people that have subscribed to the Patreon of One Page Rules as evidence of that. That game has been massively successful simply on the back of presenting an extremely playable version of Warhammer, one that has taken lessons from the last 10 years of game design. And that's all I ask from Games Workshop 2. And there is reasons to be hopeful here. Games Workshop have already done it with Kill Team recently. That is a game that didn't particularly resonate with me, but it displayed a lot of innovation and it has broken with a lot of traditional Games Workshop design ethos. And there's a lot of people enthusiastic about the game as a result. So that's a really good sign to me. I'm glad that they're trying something new. I hope they don't just look at Age of Sigmar, implement the activation system from that game, get rid of the to wound rule, and then call it a day. I hope they have actually taken lessons, played other games, and are prepared to create a really fun, really fast, and really furious war game. Number four, price. Okay, okay, I had to mention this. I'm sorry. Games Workshop love new additions. Infamously, they state all the time that their most profitable years are the years in which they release a new edition of Warhammer 40k. And it's hard not to see the pattern of a new edition every three years by hook or crook in a somewhat cynical light knowing that detail. But that's not to say it's all bad. New editions also present new opportunities, especially an opportunity to get new people to buy in to a game. New editions are a great excuse for new players to get excited about maybe playing Warhammer. And I bet that we're going to see a lot of new people get into wargaming through the 10th edition of Warhammer 40. I also have no doubt that we're probably going to see a starter box for Warhammer 10th edition that is relatively reasonably priced, you know, reasonably priced for Warhammer. A caveat which in and of itself kind of speaks to the problem here. Most people can't afford to play Warhammer 40k. Personally, I think that's a problem because most other mini war games aren't as unaffordable for most people. The problem is most people's only exposure to mini war games is through Warhammer 40k. Yeah, there's a bit of an issue. And I'm worried that seals of Warhammer 40k starter set will look really good, will have a lot of buy-in, but that outside of those seals, the community won't really grow much larger or at all. And that within a year's time, we will be buying to the exact same level of players that we are today, right at the tail end of 9th edition. The player base of Warhammer 40k is really, really small when compared to things like board games or to TTRPGs, and I would love to see that change. But there is a reason for that, and price is a really, really big one. It's hard to keep up with this type of game, especially when all of the previous concerns that I have around live service and gameplay are taken into account. 
10th is a great opportunity for Games Workshop to onboard new players. I just hope that they don't lose them. I don't know. Am I being too pessimistic? Am I being too optimistic? Let me know in the comments below. And if you're interested in six huge problems that Warhammer currently has and how I would fix them, then check out this video here. And as always, a huge thanks to my patrons, especially Sonic Bread and Crypto Kev. Thank you so much, guys. And a reminder that there is ad-free videos, bonus videos, and even STL discount codes on my Patreon at patreon.com slash discourse miniatures. Go check it out, and I'll catch y'all next time. Bye bye